And when that happens, that means you fell into that illusion of mastery that you get when you do blocked practice. And so my practice has really changed over the years, even when something's new, actually, the way I use interleaved versus blocked practice is different based on whether something is new or like close to a performance. But I no longer do like half an hour of one thing, because the research is really clear that if you practice something for a bit, and then you take a break from that, and then you come back later, and later could even be like two, three minutes later, it doesn't have to be like lots later. When the brain gets that reminder, when you've gone away and you come back and then you remind the brain, that's really powerful and that's really helpful for the brain. Um, the the analogy I use for this is like when you go to a party and you meet somebody for the first time, they introduce themselves and you promptly forget their name. Everybody does that. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. what is that person's name? <laughs> right. But if like, say, I don't know, 15 minutes later, you hear them introduce themselves to someone else, then you're like, okay, okay, okay. Like you, you got it in your head now because you've been reminded, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so with practicing, like, even if something's brand new, and it's really hard, and there's a lot of stuff I need to sort out, I'll practice it for like, 10, 12 ish minutes, something like that. And then I'll take a little break. And I'll practice something else for like two, three minutes, just a little short something. And then I'll come back to that first thing, do more practice for like, 10, 12 minutes, and then do something else for three, four minutes. So it is, I mean, I practice in 30 minute blocks of time. In the end, most of that 30 minutes is probably that new thing that I'm starting, but I've broken it up with little, little snippets of something else. And with experimenting with, you know, interleaving and switching between things, it works a lot better. Things stick with me a lot better. And I don't fall into that illusion of mastery in that it feels good. And then when I come back to it the next day, it's still there. I don't have to redo all my work. Wow. Even the new, new piece. Dive into the full, thought-provoking conversation on how cognitive science can transform your piano practice. Available now on all major podcast platforms. Follow and subscribe to The Piano Pod, where tradition meets innovation in classical piano.